From Channel 3 Eyewitness News, this is Trends on 3. Hello and welcome to another edition of Trends on 3. I'm Latrice Curry. Coming up on today's show, February is Black History Month and Heart Health Awareness Month. Doctors are looking at the disparities and how to fix the problem when it comes to heart health and minorities. Plus, help for small businesses when it comes to filling the gaps and tweaking their plans to survive a tough climate. Despite the wedding industry taking a big hit last year, meet one small business owner who recently opened a new specialty bridal shop in downtown Chattanooga. And a small business owner wants to give back during Black History Month, it could mean a better night's sleep for someone. But first, I spoke with Dr. Megan Colwright and Dr. John Golding about a new study that shows serious health disparities when it comes to heart health among minorities. Let's start by breaking down what those disparities are when it comes to the outcomes and how they receive treatment uh, comp as compared to non-white heart patients. Do you want to start, Megan, or? Sure. Okay. There is an increasing amount of research in the area of healthcare disparities, specifically focusing on the differences between white patients and non-white patients, focusing on African-Americans, Latinos, indigenous populations here in the US. And there's no doubt about it that there are significant disparities in health outcomes. Even when we control for things like access to care, that is when everyone has insurance. So there are a number of strategies that we can use to address it, but I think each article that comes out helps us understand where are the problem areas, where are the spots where we're um, having patients have barriers to care, and therefore, how can we reach out to patients to help improve those outcomes? And this particular study was important because it was focusing on outcomes around the care of patients with regards to heart disease and heart attacks. And Dr. Golding leads our cardiac cath lab where we address those issues. So it's certainly something that he and I feel very strongly about. And I wanna talk about when we start talking about those disparities, some of the key disparities are um, or fewer cases of early treatment, longer hospital stays and higher death rates. So my next question is, I know you're we've talked about even when people have access to healthcare, you're still seeing this problem. Um, why is that? Well, I think the prolonged stay has to do with the degree of the illness when they present. So a lot of this, unfortunately, the underserved population, by the time they do get to the hospital, their condition is a little more extreme because they haven't had some of the necessary early care. And I think, you know, there's a lot of layers to this, but it starts with education as far as getting access to the health care. Even in the insured patients, you have to have access to insurance, which is kind of directly related to employment, the way insurance is set up in this country. There's some still stigma from the minorities with health care, and there's been some history in the past with certain things that have been done in the healthcare setting to certain populations. So there's some fear for some patients. Some of the patients in our community don't want to see doctors. You know, they're afraid of getting into the system and what could happen to them. So I think if we can get to them earlier, as far as education about preventative things and how to better take care of themselves so that when they do present with some of these more complex problems, their overall conditioning and comorbidities aren't as bad. And I think that's what's increasing the some of the worse outcomes and some of the prolonged stays is because by the time they present to us, they have so many other things going on in addition to what they're presenting to the hospital with. When we talk about that and we talk about that, you know, by the time they get to you, by the time they get to the hospital, um, it's a lot worse than if they had obviously made an appointment, gone to see their doctor or healthcare provider earlier. So it's a lot more serious. So that's why they're staying at the hospital longer. Again, you hit on some key points when you started talking about education. Education is a key component of that, making them aware of that. How do you do that? You talked about some of the fear when it comes to the healthcare system of minorities. Uh, we talk about things all the time about diet and 
lifestyle? How do we continue to make sure that they're hearing and getting that message and understanding the importance of it? I might chime in there with some other late breaking research that has just come out in the last month, focusing on the issue that Dr. Golding just brought up with regards to trust in the medical system. One of the areas of interest has been looking at the impact of both racial and gender concordance. What that means is when you go to the doctor, does your doctor look like you? Are they from the same community that you are? Do they have an understanding of some of the things that you might be facing in your healthcare besides just the issue that's on the table in front of you? And when we look at concordance, that is racial and gender concordance between patients and their clinicians, we actually see improvement in healthcare outcomes and reduction in spending. And not because we're doing less necessarily, but just like Dr. Golding said, we're preventing those very serious admissions because we're tackling issues earlier, making sure that patients have the information they need to be a true partner in their healthcare. And I think that's one of the things that's incredibly exciting about what Erlanger has to offer is that we have a very diverse group of clinicians that are able to meet those patient needs in a unique way. I think that's really important for the community and it's actually really rare. So just in the last year, if you look at the people that are training in our field, which is called interventional cardiology, those are the, the doctors that work in the cath lab that Dr. Golding leads and that address heart attacks. Just 13% of all trainees entering this field are women and only 3% are African-American. So our ability to really offer a broad range of state-of-the-art therapies, but also represent the community, I think is important for tackling health disparities. So important as we kind of wrap up here and look at like what can be done as we head into, um, you know, this is heart month, we're talking Go Red for Women. There's a lot of focus on this issue right now. What message do you all want to leave people with as far as tackling this issue, making people more heart healthy and heart aware? Yeah, we've tried uh, to set up some outreach for the community. You know, we have uh, once or twice a month we're down. We can't do it now with COVID, but we would go down um, near UTC, set up a post, people would come in, we do free blood pressure checks and screening, but it's such a fixed location. I think to get to some of the community we're talking about, we have to go out a little further. We have set up uh, offices in the rural communities around Chattanooga, but as far as some of the inner city areas, we don't really have anything set up for that community. So. We have to start basically at the basics. You know, one of the other things is if we can catch people earlier, maybe we, and we haven't really considered this, but maybe we could get into the high school levels. And that's kind of where some of these habits get started, you know, as far as nutrition and exercise. Coming up on the other side of the break, how small businesses can take part in an upcoming session that will help them stay on track during the pandemic. Out of the darkness rises a bacon of hope. Backed by popular demand, it's the Hangover Crystal. Bacon, cheese, and a fresh cracked egg stacked high on a hot and steamy crystal. Holy moly, that looks good. Technology has greatly changed the world we live in, mostly for the better. Unfortunately, though, we see the unintended consequences caused by cell phones on a daily basis. Far too often, people are being seriously injured and hurt because of negligent drivers distracted by their cell phones. If you've been harmed by a negligent or distracted driver, the law is on your side. Let us go to work for you. Wettermark Keith, the name you know and trust. Finding the perfect pillow can be overwhelming. So many cheap pillows out there. Are you really getting the quality and support you need for a great night's sleep? That's why Denver Mattress turned to a neurosurgeon. I've been recommending Doctor's Choice for 20 years. And while finding a great mattress is important to a healthy, restorative sleep, you also need the right pillow. The Doctor's Choice pillow by Denver Mattress is the only pillow that I use and recommend to my patients. So follow the doctor's orders with the Doctor's Choice pillow. Packed with hypoallergenic down alternative microfiber and made in the USA at our very own Denver Mattress Factory, the Doctor's Choice pillow provides the ultimate neck-riddling comfort and support. 
And for a limited time, when you buy one Doctor's Choice Jumbo Pillow, you get the second free. That's right, two pillows for only $69.99 plus free shipping. And every pillow comes with our 365 night better sleep guarantee. Shop in store or online and get your Doctor's Choice Pillow today. But hurry, this offer won't last. The party is over, but there's still reason to rejoice. The Hangover Crystal has returned. Bacon cheese and a fresh cracked egg on a steamy, dreamy crystal. Goodbye, Hangover. Hello, Hangover Crystal. For a limited time. Welcome back. Small business owners have had to make some serious adjustments and tweaks to stay afloat during the pandemic. I spoke with Linda Murray Bullard about an upcoming session to help small businesses survive during difficult times. Well, hello and welcome, Linda. Thank you so much for joining me today. Well, thank you for, for having me. You know, one of the things, you have an interesting story before we get into your business and what it is you do and how you can help small business owners who are really struggling during this pandemic. You have an interesting story of getting started yourself as a small business owner. If you want to quickly tell me about that. Yes. Yeah, so back in 2013, I lost my 26-year my career. And I wanted to not lose those 26 years I had spent learning and doing things. So I created my business. First thing I did was I wrote a book and put it in the Library of Congress. The book is called The Well Ran Drive Memoirs of a Motherless Child, which is my life story. I put that into um, the Library of Congress and then I decided I still needed to do more uh, uh, to help people, to encourage people. I am an inspirator, I am a motivator. So I uh, followed Steve Harvey for a while, joined his School of Business Acceleration and learned how to do business doing one thing well. And so that was just the beginning of it. Tell us about your small business and how it is that you help other small businesses, kind of what we call shore up those gaps and kind of pivot and change. And they have had to do that definitely during the past year and during this pandemic to survive. Absolutely, because what happens is most small business owners just want to sell something. They have a product, they have a service, they have a widget that they want to put in the marketplace. But there's more to stay to being alive, to staying alive in business than just selling something. So I teach them all the fun, the foundations of how to build a strong foundation for their businesses. And I do that in a number of ways. And talk about some of those ways. How do you do that? Yeah, so I use courses. I have a course coming up. I use courses, I use classes. I actually do consultations and sometimes it's outside of my scope. So I link them to a reliable resource that can help them. And you have a, a series of classes coming up. Um, I do. February. I do. February 13th starts the next session. It's our spring section of the business courses. It is a 90 day course. So we meet on Saturday mornings from nine to 12 and we dissect business. So they learn, they get an overview to increase their business acumen. And so again, this is so it starts on the 13th and it's a, a you start and you do this for, you know, for this period of time for again, how long? For, for 12 weeks. So we finish okay. on May 1st. Okay. So right, it is a, it is the spring the spring course, and every Saturday morning from nine to twelve we meet and we really dissect, and it's based on an evidence based course that is provided by the Kaufman Foundation. And as we wrap up here, what are you finding that are some of the biggest pitfalls, shortfalls that these small businesses are running into, the ones that don't survive? Not understanding the importance of having a social media presence. With COVID, it became we, it's necessary to have an online presence. And a lot of people have brick and mortar or they're used to doing business with brick and mortar or being present. So teaching them how to pivot and have an online presence and to sell their, their services and products online. That is so important because like you said, if not, you will not be able to survive. And I don't think that even when things get back to what we call some sense of normalcy, that right. we'll ever go back to totally just brick and mortar. So this is something, a skill that you will need to keep from here on out if you want to have a successful business. Absolutely. And it also gives you a, a, a it helps you to expand your business and grow. Linda, it was great speaking with you today. Thank you so much. We're going to share information and put all of that on the screen for how people can participate and take part 
in this course. But thank you so much. We, I do appreciate you. Thank you. The wedding industry was hit hard during the pandemic, but a small business owner is betting on love in 2021. The latest on her new small business. Get to Aqua Living now and let us help you create your own paradise at home. Four person hot tubs, $26.99. Revolutionary swim spas that can heat or chill the water. Bad credit, no credit, no problem. For more information, go to aqualivingstores.com. You'd never wash dishes in this. Your dishwasher looks clean, but when grease and lime scale build up, it's not as hygienic as you think. Use finished dishwasher cleaner. Its dual action formula tackles grease and lime scale. Finish, clean dishwasher, clean dishes. We saw the advantage of coming together as a team. It really is a special thing in our community, in our region, to have true comprehensive cardiac and vascular care together. A team within a team, so to speak. Everybody is under one roof. There really is no reason for anyone to be transferred anywhere to receive vascular care. It's nice to keep our patients here with their families. Visit ChattanoogaHeart.com slash Vascular Center. Does your home need new siding? Let us guide you through the process of re-siding your home. We take off your old, rotted, worn out siding and install new, beautiful, hardy siding. And believe me, you're gonna love it. There's no need to paint because it comes pre-painted in a variety of colors. Call us today and receive free gutters or no payments for one full year. Choose the best to better your home. Visit ChattanoogaSears.com or call us at 805-3800. WG got me my life back and $250,000. WG got my medical bills paid. I'm W. I'm G. If you're hurt, call us 265-HURT. That's 265-4878. We are your local law firm. Get to Aqua Living now and let us help you create your own paradise at home. Four-person hot tubs, $26.99. Revolutionary swim spas that can heat or chill the water. Bad credit, no credit, no problem. For more information, go to aqualivingstores.com. Welcome back. A local small business owner is optimistic that weddings will make a comeback in 2021. I spoke with Beatrice Conley, the owner of the Unveiled Bridal Studio. Yay. Well, well, welcome and thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you, Latrice, for having me on today. I'm so excited to talk with you. Let's talk about this. Okay, during the pandemic, weddings got put on hold. Yes. Everyone had to either, you know, come up with an alternate plan or just say, we can't have our wedding this year. But you are saying, I want to open a bridal shop. You're yeah. optimistic that 2021 is going to be better. So Tell me about that and your thought process that went into saying, this is what I want to do, a bridal shop. Yeah, so Latrice, I've always been into fashion ever since I was a little girl. Um, I started my own clothing line back in 2012. It's called Regina James Fashion. And so I've always had this passion to help women find their dream style just to make sure that they feel as feminine and wonderful as you know all the women that we are out here today. Um, and then... 2020 hit and I had the goals of opening up my own boutique through Regina James Fashion. Um, but I was actually in the midst of planning my own wedding and I went to a bridal salon in Nashville to try on dresses with my family and I just fell in love with the atmosphere. I fell in love with the ambiance, the experience, um, just everything that a bride should feel at that moment when they're picking out their dream dress. So I it's like a magical moment. It, I mean, I just wish everyone out there, even men, you know, I wish they could experience <laughs> it is something like no other. And I had never been in a bridal salon before because I, you know, had never had been proposed to, and then I've never been a bridesmaid either. So it was really a, a very, um, just a magical experience. So I immediately, my gears start turning. I say, you know what, instead of that, you know, regular boutique that I could do anytime, I think that the bridal industry is definitely something for me and just something where I could create magic for people, not only in the Chattanooga area, but just also women from my community. Okay. Tell me a little bit about this bridal boutique and it's kind of a unique, kind of a niche kind of shop. Yeah, and definitely. So Unveiled Bridal Studio is um, located downtown. I'm on Cherry Street. Um, I'm about 700 square feet. So I'm very intimate, very small. That's why I call it a studio. Um, because I do private appointments only. 
So a bride coming down will be um, catered to in the most wonderful way. She will have this entire studio to herself along with a few close friends and family. Um, so, and I, all, I only offer about three designers at this time, but what makes uh, my studio so wonderful is that two of my designers are African-American designers. And that's amazing to me because I too am a designer and I wanted to be able to give back in that sort of sense to bring African-American designers from outside of Tennessee into our city. So two of my three designers are, are from uh, New York, uh, Amsala, and then also Pantora Bridal. They're both out of New York and they're both African-American women. So I wanted to bring that to the city. Uh, my third designer is from California. She is a uh, kind of a boho chic designer, very feminist. So I really wanted to bring a sense of womanhood to the bridal market here, which I know we have amazing bridal shops and bridal stores here already, but I wanted to bring something a little different to the city and just give it a little spice. And wrapping up in about 30 seconds, tell me about what advice you would give to others starting their own business and especially Def minorities and women. Yes, I get this question so often now. Um, the biggest thing is writing down your dreams and actually um, putting a plan together, not just mentally, but actually getting it in writing and requesting the help that you need. I have a SCORE mentor. She's amazing. I've worked with her for months and months and months to get this plan together to get my business off the ground. So indefinitely seeking out the help you need, doing the research you need, and then also writing it down and making it real. Well, thank you so much and best of luck with your new bridal shop and uh, we'll continue to follow up and see how things are going. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Patrice. I appreciate you as well. Thank you. Despite all the challenges during the pandemic, one minority small business owner has made it a mission to give back during Black History Month. Seems like CVD stores are popping up on every corner. Make sure you choose a knowledgeable vendor you can trust like the Hemp House. Choose from products that are locally sourced from farmers we work with directly. Our friendly staff will help you find the right product for you. The Hemp House on the North Shore, Eastridge, and Ottawa. This Is Us on Channel 3 is sponsored locally by Crystal. The Hangover Crystal is back. I think it's time we start a new chapter. This is us, sponsored locally on Channel 3 by Crystal. The Hangover Crystal is back for a limited time at participating restaurants. First motorcycle when I was seven years old, and I love the freedom it brings. But I have seen firsthand the devastation that occurs when a negligent driver causes a wreck with a motorcycle. Broken bones, disfigurement, paralysis, and even death. The law provides the same protections to drivers of motorcycles as it does to all other drivers. If you or a loved one has been harmed while riding a motorcycle, let Wedemark Heath go to work for you. The name you know and trust. 40 years of compassion, service, and care. In 2020, all of us have faced unprecedented challenges. Members of our team and I stood on the front lines of free COVID-19 testing. Our nurses and volunteers ran to the wreckage sites after an Easter Sunday tornado swept through Chattanooga. But this year has also given us immense hope and plenty of reasons to celebrate. What matters to you matters to us always. When it's time for a road trip, you never want to leave your best friend behind. But what if your pet isn't excited about going and it's not even from your driving? The Hemp House has a variety of products for dogs as well. Visit HempHouseChat.com for more information. A minority business owner wants to celebrate Black History Month by giving back. I spoke with Sylvester Freeman, owner of Freeman Mattress Outlet. Well, thank you so much for joining me today. Tell me a little bit about why you felt it was important as a small minority business owned business to give back during Black History Month with this free mattress giveaway. Well, it's coming up on our 10th anniversary. And so what better time to start now? So I feel like uh, with all this going on, people out of work and everything, I might can find myself to say, hey, I'm gonna do my best to put back into the community. So let's start now. Black History Month, uh, maybe this mattress, it might not benefit 
that much, but any kind of relief is better than nothing. So let's start right now by giving away a mattress. Well, you know what? That it'll make a big difference for someone who does not have one to sleep on. And for people who are maybe sleeping on the floor, they certainly could use one. Tell me about how you got started because in, in this in this business, you've been in business now. You said you're celebrating 10 years. So the mattress and furniture business, how did you get started? Uh, believe it or not, I was a delivery guy. And so uh, through that, uh, I just, under that, experience in delivering matches, I seen a big need for it. And I thought, well, why not me give it a try? And uh, believe it or not, I don't have my rough spots and trials and everything, but uh, I'm still here. So uh, I'm grateful. Tell me about, tell me a little bit about if you could describe your business in about a minute or so to me. All right. I'm going to do my best to give you an idea. Well, I try to Try to bring on affordable mattress at the same cost that the big guys and the overstock guys. I try to sell a compatible mattress at a discount price. And I try to be hands on with the community by being real flexible because I'm a local business. And from that, I give you that personal service from customer service to finance. Because I'm familiar with the understanding that uh, the need of what I'm providing. And so I'm not going to try to get into a personal perspective of what an individual could be going through, but it weighs a lot on me to be a help to someone. And so I have struggles. So I, it's easy for me to relate when I recognize, and not everybody's struggling, but when I do feel, I feel good, awfully good when I feel like I've been a help to someone. Right. And, and if, you, if you've been through something yourself and you, you run into someone who needs something and you know that they, they're going through something, then you can relate to them. And as, as we wrap up, just talk a little bit about how this mattress giveaway works if someone is interested in this. Well, we're going to have raffle. I guess it's called raffle cards and the secretary is doing all that. And I'm not I'm not totally familiar with it, but I she she explained it to me where we're gonna do raffles and you sign on, you come in, you don't have to be a per you don't have to make a purchase to sign in. So you can sign on just by dropping in and uh we'll put it in a bowl and and also on Facebook you can sign up. But I'm not totally familiar with it, but I'm on board. That's all I can tell you. And and so it will be given away later this month. Yeah, it's gonna be within this month. Okay. All right. Well, we last will put that the last, last of February. The mm -hmm. last of February. Well, we will let them know that at the Freeman Mattress Outlet there. We're going to put your information up on the screen and to let people know. And thank you so much for joining me today. And good luck with your business and this giveaway as well. I appreciate everything. That's all the time we have for this edition of Trends on 3. I'd like to thank my guests for sharing their time with us. If you would like to be a guest on Trends on 3, then you can reach me at lcurry at wrcbtv.com. Make sure to follow me on Twitter. Join me on Facebook. Thanks so much for joining us today. Have a great rest of your weekend.